I still got the internet in my hand. I still got the internet. Do you have a response? A response to what? Fantano is a pay to play viral corporate shill for NPR and a few major indie labels. He has no idea what he's talking about and reads prefabricated reviews. I love you and have a nice day. Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review, Neil Young and Crazy Horse, Americana. Neil Young is a legendary singer-songwriter and musical adventurer, having performed music in genres ranging from country music to electronic music, folk rock, surf music as well. And let's not forget that just in general he's released some of the most significant records in rock music period and was regarded in the 90s by some to be the godfather of grunge. Now when I last ran into a new Neil record it was for a review of his 2010 album Le Noise. Not really one of my favorites in his catalog but still one that stands out because of its unique aesthetic in his catalog. Really, it's Neil singing solo a group of songs, both new and old, and his only accompaniment is a distorted, reverbed wall of guitar noise just swirling around his vocals and his chord progressions. And a few years later now, we have a, a brand new studio effort here, but it's not just Neil. It's not just Neil. Whoa. It's Neil with Crazy Horse, the band he's recorded and performed with on and off for years. They've been there for a lot of his studio albums, most of his live albums, and a great deal of very important turning points in his career, like his first commercially successful record, as well as his musical resurrection in the 70s, and his newfound relevancy in the 90s too. And they're now with this record working with Neil on this new project, this new concept album that has a pretty simple approach but some interesting results. Basically, assemble a group of songs with some kind of significance in the history of American music and then rework them through these really kind of rough fast and loose folk rock jams that sound like they're kind of being played live in the studio. And here and there kind of alter the chord progressions a bit, alter the melodies a bit, maybe even change up the lyrics or the meaning of the story subtly. And while this is nothing altogether new, a lot of artists have put together full-length LPs celebrating the history of American music. Neil Young and Crazy Horse definitely have their own excitingly weird approach when it comes to approaching the material on this LP. I mean, these guys play these old-timey folk songs with a lot of swagger, a lot of grit, distorted guitars just blaring out of what sounds like a, a very kind of small amplifier that is most likely two times older than me, drums with a lot of room ambience on them, and to kind of take the edge, the rough edge off of Neil and his band playing and, and singing, there is a background chorus consisting, I, I think, mostly of females singing along to some of these songs and adding, you know, a kind of smoothness, a kind of beauty to this very rusty presentation. They really bring a modern sadness to the song Clementine, and Neil and his band just kind of lyrically tell it the way it is and really bring out the song's dark meaning, which is pretty much a tune about the death of the lover of the narrator of the song. She died in a drowning accident. And Neil even makes sure to work in the verse toward the end of the track about getting over her death by kissing her sister. <laughs> which is pretty messed up and not something I remember in the song when it was taught to me as a child. Mm -mm. An even more defining moment is the song Oh Susanna where Neil and Crazy Horse really rock the song out. They bring a real kind of just swanky groove to the song and they really change up the chords too and just kind of make it sound just so uh, just dirty like 
Oh, Susanna, cause I come from Alabama with my B-A-N-J-O on my knee. The way Neil and these guys play it, they totally strip it of that youthful innocence that I'm sure most people associate with it. But I kind of feel like this album starts to falter a little bit too early in the game. The song Gallows Pole, I feel, doesn't really take enough liberties with the song in terms of just mood. It feels really rigid. It doesn't really bring that much fire, I guess. And I don't really like the mm -ba, mm -ba, mm -ba, ba, ba, delivery of the drums. It's just kind of so flat for me, I guess. Some tracks on this LP really do feel like they're played a little too straight for me. And this album sort of loses view of its concept as it does that, especially on the Billy Ed Wheeler track, High Flying Bird, just kind of seems like a 60s song thrown in there for good measure. And honestly, it kind of feels like Neil and the band are taking more away from this track's Jefferson Airplane cover than they are the original. However, I do feel like Americana regroups and pulls it together for a good ending for the last few tracks. Neil and Crazy Horse definitely put together the ballsiest recording of She's Coming Around the Mountain to ever be placed on wax. B -b but I think the most genius moment of this album comes on the final track, a cover of God Save the Queen. Toward the middle of the song, Neil and Crazy Horse expose the melodic connection between God Save the Queen and My Country Tis of Thee. Basically pointing at the fact that a song celebrating the monarchy that America rebelled against was repurposed into a patriotic song in the 1800s. I don't think you need more proof than that, that ripping things off is at the very root of American culture. I enjoyed the hell out of this record because of how well it exposes that dark underbelly of early American music. I just wish it did it more consistently. I'm feeling a light to decent seven on this LP. If you guys took a listen to it, what did you think? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What should I review next? And yeah, that's about it. Anthony Fantano, Neil Young, and Crazy Horse, forever.